Welcome back to Vice Grip Garage, a day five, the final day of Hot Rod Power Tour. Today we've got to drive six and a half hours from the Gulf Shore of Alabama here, all the way up to Atlanta. Who knows what adventures we're gonna to find today, but I do know we are scheduled to do laps around Atlanta Motor Speedway at a Cat Farm Crew Cab. It's gonna be an awesome day. So Jessica and Bentley are down saying goodbye to the shore, playing in the sand for a couple of minutes. Bentley's just absolutely loving it. A uh, great part about these trips is you get to see so much of the country. Derek is packing up the truck, so Bentley and I are enjoying this amazing view for the last few minutes while we can. We're hoping to meet all of you fine folks out at, where are we going today? Atlanta. That'll be fun, so hope to see you all there. Cab is just charging up the AC on the Suburban. It's got a really slow leak. Uh, you made it to day five, finally threw a can in it. AC still works on that thing, factory unit. Pretty awesome. Just doing the usual, seeing if anything got stolen, emptying the water out of the coolers, gonna grab some ice, stuff like that. Use the ice machine at the motel, fellers and fellas. It's free, you know what I mean? Saves you 10 bucks right away in the morning. Not gonna check the oil, cause she's just tilted back here on this asphalt i'll wait till i get to the gas station but got to do the usual you know the drill by now plug in all the bleep bloops and the computers and the anti-thefts and whatnot get packed up and we got to start moving it is 7 11 early billion o'clock the sun is just peeking over the buildings uh, we got to get there before four o'clock that's when we're scheduled to do laps around that track can't miss it how many miles we got now 1,079 on the rig. How was the beach? Oh, it was the best time. Was it? Found out that, yes, mornings are... Got some shells? Yeah, mornings are the time to go. Some cooler stuff down there. Nice. Now, some of you might be curious with the gas prices, you know. What does it take for a guy to do something like Hot Rod Power Tour as far as expenses? Well, if you plan your motels way in advance and even share rooms with friends and stuff like that, that obviously helps. The closer you get to the event, obviously rooms are going to go up because they figure out what's going on, right? The other kind of trick there too is you can stay at KOAs. They have cabins and things like that and cabanas. And they're really, really affordable. Or just bring a tent or whatever if you really need to. For us, the 1,500 miles with the fuel mileage we're averaging, we're going to have about $600 into fuel, which is a lot of money. But I also know a guy could easily spend that one day at Disney or one day at the lake renting jet skis in a cabin or one day with the fishing guide. I mean, it all just comes down to how do you want to spend your money and your vacation time. For us, Power Tour is great because we get five days. We could stretch our budget. And obviously, we're going through multiple states and seeing a lot of stuff. So, But we might switch it up. We might do cruising the coast. I don't know. We've done this four or five years now. We like to try different things. What do you guys think? Bleep bloop it down there below if there's other events, Pigeon Forge, things like that you'd like to see us go to and bring you along with us. Filling up right now, grabbing the accoutrements for the road, dill pick chips, the beef jerky, nacho cheese, gotta have it. That's my breakfast actually. And then we'll hit the road right over this bridge up here. Takes us out of Bama, up towards Montgomery. And, uh, we're going to kind of go up the west side of the state this time instead of going east across the Gulf. Now that the guy's got her on flat ground, check the oil, plumb full, no issues there. No moisture again, it's just that one day. It's kind of odd. Everything's looking good. Yep, mm hmm, check, sure, yep, check, look that over, look, yep, mm hmm. All right, here we go.
never seen a card game going at a gas station, but we got one. First steel stop, a couple hot rods in here. No idea where we're at. Truck's doing good, still hasn't gotten hot or anything like that. I think the rear end leak has subsided and or it's empty because the oil isn't fresh from the tailgate anymore. We're just gonna keep ignoring that now. I'm gonna check it uh, when we get to Atlanta though when it cools down and see if we gotta put any more juice in that. I got a few more quarts. Uh, top off, we got a tizzle bizzle over there somewhere. Grab some takeos and uh, hit the road. We're making pretty good time actually. After about 58 laps around the outside of the track, we found the way to get to the insider of the track, posted up at DEI here. Folks are starting to line up. This is my favorite part is meeting you guys, hearing your stories, seeing your rigs, all the pictures, where you're from. And then we'll walk around and look at some rigs. There are a bunch of them out here. And the infield is packed. People are lining up, doing laps around the track. We're gonna try to get out there and do that as well. And Chad's over here using some product, trying to wrap up those wires we zip tied this morning. So 
these wires here were touching this manifold this morning. We were checking things over and I kind of just zip tied her out of the way, of course, but we're gonna use this DEI wrap. This stuff's handy because you can just snap it open, cover your existing wires and then boop. You know, you guys see me use this on the truck a bunch. We'll cut that to size and get this covered through here and then he won't burn through those and arc stuff out and blow 58 fuses or however many you got in this thing on the way home. And There we go, that's much better. Even if that makes contact now, it ain't gonna burn through. That'll be just fine, get him home with no problems. We're running about 76 hours late, but we're gonna try to do the lap still. Um, I just prefer to stay and talk with you folks rather than just walk off. I'm not even sure where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to do, but we're here. Let's see if we can get around the lantern. Well, we made it by the skin of our darn teeth right now. We're gonna go up and get in line. Completely coincidence, look who's in front of us, the old blue shop truck. I'm gonna smash the brakes quick, get in the Suburban, do some photos. Sweet 18 van here brought his family. Look at the seats. It's like a dang old movie theater in here. Beautiful van. TVs? Yes, sir. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a mess back there. I apologize. Well, you got to keep the kids Coming busy. Coming from North right? Carolina, right? Yeah. <laughs> my hair's all messed. Having a starting issue. We figured out it's sparkles. He's got a module bad, most likely. Coil test's good. So we'll try to get him to summit. We got plenty of rides here. Get that swapped and be on the road. Look at this thing though. Side pipes. It's got the right wheels. Very cool. It even has it in the mirror. For God's sake. <laughs>
100% clutch. Old C10's got her covered. Good morning. Hot Rod Power Tour is officially over. Yesterday was the last day, but we're not done yet because obviously we've still got to get home and we've got some adventures today. I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. I've always wanted to go here for years. It's legendary, 37 acres with reported 4,000 classic cars. It's supposed to be the world's largest private junkyard or collection, Old Car City, USA. It's about an hour and a half north of here. And if I get a hold of the feller, we're gonna go look at a antique Ford. A guy might snag up on the way home as well. And then of course, we've still got the 300, 350 miles, give or take. See if the truck gets us back home. So let's hit the road. Guy lost his SGs. All the gas station had was these alien looking things for way too much money that are too small. Squeeze them in my face and give me a headache. Great. But we made it. Old Car City, USC. We got an airplane, Monte Carlo, some 50 stuff. I see hubcaps to a Taurus. This is going to be great. Entrance is over here somewhere. There's 37 acres. We're not going to be able to do it all, honestly. The limit to walkability for me is about 84 feet. So we're going to swing around on a radius here, see what we can catch. And I'm also seeing some stuff over here for sale. I have to swing over there too. This Lincoln right here was the last car Elvis Presley ever purchased. Bought it in June and he passed away in August. He gave it to his hairdresser, friend. All right, we're going to head out. We go right or left. What are we going to do? Um, let's go right. Right? This reminds me of my friend Roger's establishment. <laughs> kind of the same. It looks ca like chaos almost, but it's art in a way. Like it's just neat to me, all the different little things. Well, there is so much to see here, fellers and fellettes. We're just gonna have to walk through and just show you some of our favorite stuff. It's seven miles of walking. If we were to try to do the whole thing, we'll do our best, but here you go. Hope you enjoy.
bucket list sellers. I honestly have never seen so many Chargers, Challengers, Novas, Dusters, and Mustangs in one spot in my entire life. Hundreds and hundreds of each. I lost count. It's incredible and there's literally every make and model here. They weren't biased as far as what they took in or collected. Really neat and there's so many trinkets and signs and cool stuff along the way as well. You can spend all day here. Pack a lunch is what I'm saying. And I'd bring at least 18 fellers, not 12. That ain't gonna do you as far as the cold tonight. But bleep bloop your favorite down there. Like I say, I couldn't catch them all. Just kind of walking through, taking a glimpse here at this place. Pretty neat, but comment which one kind of blew your socks off, maybe halfway back on, I don't know. Or maybe I missed something I should have looked closer at. Put that down there below. We're gonna go across the street maybe, grab a bite to eat, get some refreshments, and hit the road. We still got a long ways home. Chili dog. That's what I have for lunch. Dipped and sprinkled. It's a thing. Well, we're gonna head over, try to take a look at this 1929 Ford Model A. Yep, I said it. It's about an hour from here. We're gonna head straight there, meet this guy, check this thing out. So I wasn't gonna show you just another typical fuel fill, but I upgraded my sunglasses. And I like them. I mean, let's test them out. No, they do absolutely nothing. Everything is red for some reason. But uh, I like the coverage, the wraparound. So I'm gonna roll with these. It's a neat story. It's an actual barn find that he bought on auction, non-running. It was parked in 1958, and it sat since. He bought it on an auction, had it delivered, and it's too much for him. Uh, the downside is the transmission stuck in gear, and because of that, I couldn't verify if the engine even rotates. Normally, you could get the car to roll with it, but I wasn't able to do that. It needs everything. And He's got an awfully proud price on that thing, so I'm going to sleep on it a little bit, I think, on that one. But let me know what you think, um, if it's worth taking on a project of that scope or not, I guess. You know, a guy and a gal is just cruising the back roads like we always do, <laughs> trying to get home. And I got a dang old cruising car show, Fort Payne, Alabama, all the way down the streets here. I don't know. We just swung in, met a feller. He said we could park here. And uh, we're going to walk down and see if we can give some business to some local folks here and see what happens. Look at the Chevy. Oh my goodness. Beautiful truck. Well, that is a pretty red. Wow. Goodness gracious. Oof to May. Come on now. Oh, help me. Four speed. Oof. Yep, mm -hmm. that's my size. That's interesting. Oh yeah. Ooh, I kinda like those wheels. To be honest. She swapped on. The LS's, man. They're like the new small block Chevy. And we're learning the reliability is up there. Just talking to a fella there that owns that blue Chevy. He's a subscriber and filled us in on the deets here. It's a big drive-in once a month, I guess. He said this whole street all the way down, all the way down this way, and all the way down another street absolutely fills up. Apparently we're early. We just happen to like pulling no, at the perfect time and we're right in the middle which i guess is premier 
you gotta have a membership card. Not really, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and it starts at five, which is like 20 minutes. So we're just gonna hang out, I think. Yeah. Maybe uh, go shop at some of the antique stores, stuff like that. Look at this GT. Whew. Yeah. But this is the benefit. I know I've told you guys 596 times, travel the back roads, get off the interstate for Pete's sake. Smokehouse, Rip Shack, tacos, I gotta go. Bentley really likes this one, huh, bud? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we got going on, but I like it. Very unique. Well, someone else just got off power tour. This air unit's got the universe roof on her. Man. Jessica's gonna talk me into getting a wagon soon. I just know it. Whoever built this here furred pickup, <coughs> great job. Wood grain really pops. Sure like your XLT badge. Really nice looking rag. Oof, dog. Brought the kiddo. Good for you. What have we got under here? Air conditioning. Oof. This is a beautiful Chevrolet. Interesting color combo, but it works. A little red. You know, Alabama. These fellers went to high school here in Fort Payne. I ain't kidding you. Cecil right there. That's pretty cool. 23 American Music Awards, fellers and fellas. 27 Billboard Magazine Awards. Pretty crazy. She got houndstooth. Oh yeah. Beautiful. be dipped. Ah. Mm-hmm. Original generator still. Looking good. Jess, you gotta find one of those baskets. I know, I was looking at the trunk on the back too. Did you see that? Yeah. It's a whole rack assembly that goes into the bumper. That's neat. Beautiful car. Thank you, thank you. Mm. Oh yeah. Well. Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a clone or not. Boy, the shiny stuff just scares my boots off. You got a six pack of something in there. I don't know what. Another swap, beautiful green. That's green, not black. Yeah, definitely. Another swap, I'm telling you fellers, it's here. Motor is a little less to do since you have about 30,000. LT life. Beautiful. These guys are playing back there. Found an antique so. Fun fact, if you're an antiquer you'll know this, but this here occupied Japan is actually very hard to find. And if you don't know what that is, you can tell because of the way that it is, the pastel stuff. Or actually this is I hope they don't mind. I don't want to list it. But there's a stamp on the bottom. You see that? And there's a very short period of time where they made occupied japan so basically from 1945 to 1952 japanese factories were producing porcelain to the tastes of europe and the united states 
and uh, that's where a lot of that comes from. But it's really, really hard to find. We go in antiquing all the time, and rarely do you find pieces, and it's usually really expensive. These prices are fantastic. Ooh, we got some ball jars back here. Make great uh, overflows. Drinking cups, actually. Old school coffee grinder. Throw your beans in, grind them up, and then you open the drawer, and there's your fine ground coffee. Fancy. Look at this bag phone. I'll <laughs> be dipped. This is also really neat. Some of you younger fellers watching probably don't know what this is. It ain't a shovel. I'll tell you that. This is an oil spout. See how sharp that is right there? You jam this into the can, and then oil would just, you know, it would. If this is the oil, it turns into a spout. This is an oil spout then. Pretty neat. Well, she's starting to fill in. <laughs> now this Mustang, I absolutely love this thing. Obviously, classic styling, beautiful color, beautiful interior, but this, I really, really respect. Look at that. You kept her in there. Why not? It works, it looks great, it's got air. That's how it came, leave it be, you know? You can have a nice looking rig. You ain't gotta have 750 horse. Very nice job. Well, now we're making crew socks on a machine from 1924, I believe. Check this out. What? This is wild. <laughs> I'm, I'm just mind bottled right now. I'm not even sure what's happening. So it's banana oil used on these machines, right? Yeah. And that's the oil they figured out wouldn't, what was it, the uh, elastic wouldn't affect the elastic, yeah? Yep. Really cool. Those are all needles in there, on the outside edge. To tune so you don't pull too much air over your burner. Yeah. But we don't, if the burner's not been working great, right, it will take okay. It's a super high-speed machine. Oh, wow. Good job. Good to me. Yeah. They don't wear them. And these socks are in the gray, they're not blue. That's G R E I G H. Okay. Color of cotton. There you go. Nice. Those are yours. Pair of socks. Look at that. <laughs> so he was just explaining back in the day, you'd get paid by a dozen. So this is your paycheck back in the day right here, a dozen there, a dozen here. So you'd basically go through, work these machines, tie these up, turn them in at the end of the day, and there's your paycheck. It's really cool. Got yellow over here going. That one's working the toe. That one's done.
we made her home. 1,729 miles all together. I guesstimated 1,500. Yep. Way off. That's, that's fine. Listen, new build. Other than a couple dollar pinion seal, absolutely zero issues. It really felt weird this year. And Jessica and I talked about it. We're going to do something a little bit different next year, you know, so we don't get soft on anybody here. <laughs> We're going to throw together something crazy last minute, right before the tour, kind of do an old school tour, low budget, something like that. But it was a lot of fun. And I tell you what, just the spontaneous days are probably the most fun. We didn't plan anything this whole trip. No, nothing at all. And it was so much fun. Uh, we have a steering wheel to give away. We got a winner. Let me go grab the wheel. Let's get that announced right now. This is Jessica's phone, by the way. I ain't got the pink sparkles. But anyway, the winner just randomly picked is Phil Benston. Bangston? He's from Minnesota. And uh, what did he buy? He just picked up a flag sticker. That's it, a flag sticker. Phil, you're going to get a second package showing up. You're going to get the original steering wheel to the Cat Farm Crew Cab. And I even scribbled on it there for you. A little bit sticky, but you know, you can do with it what you want. Thanks everybody that grabbed something from vicegripgarage.com. Do you guys want me to do this more often with pull off parts or whatever, or maybe something else cool? Let me know, bleep bloop it, we'll check it out. That's gonna do it for Hot Rod Power Tour. Thanks everyone that watched and followed along, liked, subscribed, everything like that. Tonight, we're still not done working. I've got all these totes over here on the floor. I'm going to be packing up those, organizing, grabbing some tools, loading the truck right back up because we're going to get ready for a revival. So we'll see you guys Friday for a classic truck revival. Thanks, guys. See you later.